Hello YouTube, how are you? Hello and welcome to another edition of Andy's Shed Live. This time for Sunday the 13th of August 2017. Hello there, how are you? Have you had a good week? I hope you have. Um, I'm having a bit of a rush around today because I've just come back from Tissington, from the Vintage Valley over there at Tissington. So if you were there this afternoon, a big hello to you. Um, to all the team that were out there this afternoon over there at, uh, at Tissington raising money for the local air ambulance. So a good cause there this afternoon. So hello and welcome to the show today. It is going to be another busy one that we have got lined up for you this Sunday evening. So settle down in front of YouTube and um, remember if you don't catch it now we will have this available as a back episode on demand on youtube very soon it doesn't come available straight away after the live shows it's it generally takes a while for it to appear on youtube so uh, watch out for it. it should be around tomorrow morning though so mon mon monday you should be able to uh, you should be able to catch it live or rather on demand if not before then you should be able to catch it. And remember, if you want to find it the easy way, you can find it now on our website. Our bright, shiny new website over there at Andy Shed. Here is the address. It's andyshed.callpress.net. Now, this is a new address. Uh, we used to have a WordPress website. We have now moved. So, it's now andyshed.callpress.net. That is uh, where you need to go to find our brand new all singing, all dancing website. And uh, that one is mobile friendly too. So you should be able to get a good uh, a good experience on whatever device you watch on. And you'll find uh, if you go into the uh, section mark shows and then click on Andy Shed Live, you'll then be able to see all the episodes of Andy Shed Live with the latest one that's on there at the top of the list. So you don't have to scroll right through the list. To find the latest one so there we are and that is our web address and remember that if you want to get extra special things for the show if you want some extra special features then why not become a patron of the show and help us out with some of the production costs you can become a patron by simply going here patreon.com forward slash Andy Shed and you'll find all the information you need there you can start from a pound or one dollar if you happen to be in America um, per month not per show but per month and all our patrons get various different awards but you'll find all the information there at patreon.com forward slash Andy Shed Okay, right, without further ado, we will crack on, shall we? And uh, requests have been coming thick and fast for uh, items for us to do um, over the last week since I put out that, that appeal saying, what would you like to see us do on the show last week? And uh, lots of you have got in touch with us, so we are going to be doing various things. We've been, we've been asked to do some things about phones. We've been asked to do um, something about the uh, telephone 706 clones as i call them the 706s that aren't 706s that were made by people like ericsson and gec and people like that um that's going to be a bit complicated we have done a separate video in the past about that if you look on if you look on the andy shed youtube channel you'll find a separate video about uh, about the uh, ericsson 706 clones and things but we are going to do an update, but that's going to be a bit complicated, so it'll be a couple of weeks or so off at least yet, yeah, that. Um, but another request that we've had um, was regarding trim phones. And uh, we, we had a request in saying, can you show me how to uh, set a trim phone up for modern day operation? So, your wish is my command and um, we will we will do that because I happen to have a trim phone right here right here you see is a trim phone if I put it that way on we can get it in the shot how about that something, something like that there you go one trim phone 
how's that for you that's uh, that's good isn't it there's the uh, there's the old trim there marvelous so yeah so that is the trim foam and uh, I think we I'm just uh, going to fiddle with the uh, fiddle with the uh, the shot a bit there because uh, I think we need to uh, change the size of that a bit so we can get everything in so just bear with me one second and you can tell it's live tally this can't you <laughs> we're just uh, just altering things around a bit so we can fit everything in the screen and you can see what's going on right if I do that and then I do something like that and then I do that you can see better what we're uh, what we're up to here what we're doing with this uh, this here trim foam right so now you can see it we'll uh, we'll have a closer inspection shall we we'll, we'll have a closer look all right you may have noticed this is a push button trim foam but same applies for a dial one so that makes absolutely no difference whatsoever really so I'll get my trusty little screwdrivers yeah, and uh, we'll take the top off now to get the top off a trim foam basically you just take the handset off and you'll see a plastic screw in there all we have to do is undo that now, these screwdrivers are a little bit small really for that screw do with a bigger one but I just don't have one to hand so we just loosen that and it will come right out probably but all you need to do is loosen it and then the top lifts off from the back like that. And then, and then it's still clipped under at the front. So you just have to jiggle it about a bit at the front and pull it sort of towards the front once you've lifted the back up and it'll come off. And there it is. And that's the little screw thing fell out. I put that back in and we'll put that to one side. Now this is a non-converted trim foam, as you'll see from the end of the uh, the old cable here. It's got an old end on it. So this one has not been converted. So what we need to do is have a look what he's wear. We just need to shift this out of the way, which is always in the way on a trim foam, and. we look inside and you will see in here here are your your terminals it starts here at T1 T2 T3 T4 T5 T6 T7 T8 T9 then on the bottom row T10 T11 T12 T13 T14 T15, T16, T17, T18 and T19. Okay. So, that's what we've got. That is the trim foam in its unconverted state. So, how do we do it? What do we have to do to convert a trim foam? Well, really it's just like any other phone it's just like any other so if we have a little look at the the uh, way of converting a 746 let's uh, get that up on the screen that is what you do to convert a 746 or a 706 or an 8746 that is what you do basically so we'll have a look so you see t17 t 16 17 18 and 19 on the bottom row there they are all connected together 16 17 18 and 19 on that um 
but let's have a look at our trim phone itself and on our one you will see 1918 and 17 are connected together but not 16 and there's a wire on 16 and there's a little a little um, resistor in there so that resistor is doing 16, 17, 18 and 19 so what has happened there do you think should there be a resistor in there well I think somebody's put that in that resistor there because there's that grey wire and if we look where that grey wire goes it's a grey wire there on 16 and if we look back at our thing again it says a wire which is purple on that going from 16 goes to the bell set so a wire from T4 goes to the bell set and a wire from T19 should go from T16 sorry should go to the bell set so that's uh, what should happen so that's where that's where these wires should go so let's have a little look back on the phone again and we'll see where they do go so T4 1 2 3 4 and if you look at 4 there that is 4 there I don't know if you can see that that I've got my um, my screwdriver on there that has got another wire it's going off and that is going into the circuit board under here and it's going there and that grey wire that came off from T16 that's going under the circuit board here and it's going in there right and it's going in there just like that brown one and they're going in to the circuit board and basically they're going through that board the electronic ringer and then grey and brown are popping up again there and going to the ringer which is that round thing under there so they are correct so what's this little thing doing now I've just noticed on this when you put this board back in it's the same one with a dial it's got little legs that fit under the top part of the circuit board this circuit board is in two pieces and this half of the board is slightly higher than this half of the board and this has got a little bent leg so I've just got to try and get that leg back in shape again just so I can tuck it under the circuit board there and then put that end down just to put that back in place so we've got that little resistor in there that I don't think should be in there um, I think it's somebody that's had a go at converting it and has got it a little bit wrong because with this having an electronic ringer you don't need those resistors in um, they are only there for things with a manual ringer with actual bells actual actual bells that ring so you don't need that in for something like this okay are you with that so far you with that by the way if any of you are watching this live and you're wanting to know more about what we what we're talking about remember we do have a chat room now um, you can get into our chat room and uh, you can see what's going on there if you're watching us on YouTube you should find a little uh, a little button somewhere that says enter the chat room and you should be able to get into the chat room and uh, when you get in there into uh, into that chat you should find that it uh, it looks something like this and uh, if you go in there you'll uh, you'll be able to have a chat with us in there okay Mega. that's marvellous so yeah 
Right, we'll we'll get on with it a bit more. I just need to alter a bit more on one of the other cameras. Okay, that's done it. Marvellous, that's it, so I can do that, you see. And then we can see this, and we can see what's going on. So, that little resistor in there, I think that can come out. But what else should be together? What else should we uh, should we have together? Right, let's have a look and uh, go back to our diagram. So, we've got, at the minute, we've got... 17, 18 and 19 joined by links 17, 18 oops. 17, 18 and 19 are joined by links on there if you can see those 17, 18, 19 and they're also joined to 16 by that resistor at the minute but that could be just an ordinary link in there I'm fairly sure Somebody tell me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that can be an ordinary link in there. Then I should have T5 and 6 joined with a link and T8 and 9. So let's have a look and see what we've got. 1, 2, 3, 4, and I've got 4 and 5 joined with a link. Five and six. Four, five, six. Joined with a link on mine. So let's have a little look where we should be. It should be, well, it would normally be four, well, yeah, it should be four five and six they should be joined um, because on this picture it's got that 3.3 .3 kilo ohm resistor between t4 and t5 as you'll see there but we don't actually need that resistor because it's an electronic ringer and it doesn't take that much power to require that resistor to get it down to a ren1 rating so we can just put a link in there so we can link 4, 5 and 6, T45 and T6. And that link to T8 and 9, well, that is sometimes missing and there is debate about how important that is. And if it's not there, basically, I don't put it in, that link between 8 and 9, because the red wire of the line cord goes to 8 and the orange for the dial um, generally comes off of 8 and uh, there's not generally anything on 9 at least not on the top of it unless there's something on the circuit board underneath so it looks like it's all set up pretty much as it should be but it's looking like there's just that resistor between T16 and T17 that's looking a bit suspect so, apart from that, it's looking okay. Right, so we'll go and we'll have a little look again and see what we can uh, what we can do. Right, so that resistor, what colour bands has it got on it? I'm just looking down at it now. And it looks like... It's orange, orange and red, orange, orange, orange and gold is a 3.3 .3 kilo ohm. So I'm wondering if that resistor that they've put in, um, that they've put in down there little that little grey resistor there if you can see that 
I'm wondering if that's what they've put in in an attempt to emulate what a 3.3 kilo ohm resistor does, which is one of these, in a phone with an ordinary ringer, with you know, with a bell ringer, and instead of putting it from there to there, from T4 to T5, where it would normally go, and it would normally go um, T4 to T5, as you can see in the picture there if instead of putting it at that side of the bell set they've just put it on the other end of the bell circuit um, between T16 and T17 which it looks like what they've done. So I think somebody has erroneously put in a resistor there that shouldn't be there. But we can uh, we can easily sort that out um, if we if we need to. But I think it'll probably work with it still in. That I don't think it will uh, it will affect it too much. So where should all the wires go? right so what have we got well let's have a look here's the line cord all right so where are the cables going for the line cord we've established all the links are in the right place right blue one two three four five appears to be on t5 that's t1 t2 t3 t4 and t5 so blue are the line cord is on T5 and this right let's have a little look well I've got blue on there on T6 but you'll see T6 is jumper to T5 and indeed jumper to T4 um, in L version because that resistor isn't there it's just a jumper so Although I've got it strictly correctly on T6, there's no problem in having blue on T5. So that's fine. That can stay there. Right. Where does green go? Green is down here. On That's T19 there. 18, 17, 16 green is on T15 so let's have a little look and it's on 15 there look T10 11 12 13 14 15 greens on 15 so that can stay there so I think somebody has converted this phone but just done it in a strange way um, already and they've put the wrong line cord on it basically they've not put a line cord on that's got a a new style plug on the other end but let's carry on and just make sure so working on that theory we now know that the blue goes to the right place and green goes to the right place so red should go to T8 so let's have a look where red goes and here's our red cord if I can keep my fingers out of the way and it's T1 here T2 here, T3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I don't know if you can see that, but that is actually connected there. It goes around there and around there, and it's on T8. It just goes under these other wires here. But that red is actually on T8 there on that top row. So that's fine. So the only one left is white, which should be on T18. So let's have a look where white goes. And yeah, it's one from the end. There it is. Look, I'll wiggle it about so you can see it. And it's on T18, and there's the end there, T19. Okay. So that looks like that is all in the right place. It's just that somebody has put that little grey resistor there on the other end 
of the bell circuit and it'll it'll still do the same job on the other end of the bell circuit I would think but that is basically how you do it so that is where your connections should go and if you want to check the handset connections red to T1 green to T2 blue to T3 and white to T10 for your handset so it's red green blue and then white on the bottom let's have a little look well getting it out will be a bit of a pain but basically here is your handset cord it's this why it goes into the phone here but then basically these are the wires coming across here that are your handset in this sleeve here and I can see that red goes to one and I can then see that um, green goes to two, blue goes to three and white goes to ten and I, I can see that in there um, I don't know if you can if I hold it up a bit well that's where they go so that is like a 706 and 746 as well so I think if you're wanting to wire your trim phone for modern day operation I think you could do a lot worse than just follow a normal 706 or 746 or 8746 diagram but just leave out that 3.3k resistor you don't need that make that a solid link there instead but follow that diagram and just make that a solid solid link between T4 and T5 where I've got that 3.3k resistor and you should be good to go at that okay so that's it that is how you wire a trim foam and everything else everything that I've not talked about in that just leave it where you find it basically um, but if you find any extra links or anything in there they're the things you might have to remove or if you, you, you need to move your links and things to make it make it look like that diagram inside and you should be okay okay marvelous that is great that is so yeah there you go that is what you do that is how you how you wire it Now, we need to put the top back on that then, don't we? So, we'll stick the top back on. We'll, uh, we'll bung that back on there. So, get the top again. And your wire for a trim phone your line cord should have a little grommet on it that fits in there but they often don't and what people tend to do is wrap the wires and I don't particularly like this it looks wrong to me but a lot of people do this wrap the wires around that metal thing that sticks up that the screw goes into and somehow just push it down the back of there like that so it traps in the little gap when you put the lid on and remember there's two latches in this lid here and here there's two little two little lugs that you have to sort of put it on like that then put it up to it so so those lugs catch under it catch under the base and then you should if all things are equal be able to get the top back on and it 
is very fiddly. It is super fiddly. In fact, I'm having trouble with this just because I'm trying to do it live. Of course, I'm having difficulty. And the difficulty I'm having is mainly due to the buttons being in the way. Now, what is holding that? the buttons on that but I can't lift that out and put the buttons in first because if I was to do that I wouldn't get those latches in so I can't just put it down like that I've got to get those latches into position This is where all your wires and things get in the way. Really, really awkward. If this was a dial phone, what I would do is I would take the uh, I would take the dial finger plate off um, from the top, and that makes getting the cases onto 706 and 746 and that and dial trim phones way, way, way easier if you take the uh, finger wheel off the top. But with this, we've just got to struggle. God knows how you do this. There must be an easy way that I'm missing here. There must be. Something that I am completely missing. I don't know how you might do this. Ah, that's it. You have to use a bit of... A little bit of... Brute force and ignorance goes a long way. <laughs> there we go. And that is basically down again. And while you've got it down like that, do up that little screw. And rest safe in the knowledge that the innards of that are as they should be. That's good, isn't it? All right. Put my little screwdriver back in the case. There. And that is that. That is how you do the uh, the old trim phone. If you've got any questions, remember to get into the chat room. And that uh, have we got any any questions that have uh, that have come up in there at the uh, at the moment? No, it doesn't look like we have at the minute. But, uh, I'm sure somebody will be commenting on this and asking questions about the trim phone in the comments later. So that's how you do it. That's how you wire a trim phone. Got it? Good. Right, where can I put that now? I've got to put that out of the way somewhere in here. It's really now of space down here. That's it. Right, the trim phone is out, out of the way. Um, right, what else have I got to tell you? Um, I guess, really, I should tell you about some of the other things that we've been uh, we've been out and about and uh, and buying recently because i have been out getting some other weird and uh, weird and wonderful things and uh, it's been uh, it's been interesting shall we say all the uh, all the stuff that we've been uh, been getting just recently one thing that i have bought in uh, in recent weeks is believe it or not a barrel piano and I'm just looking if I've got a photograph of it um, and I don't think I have at the minute no I haven't got a photograph I can probably show you one on my phone if you want me shall I show you a picture of the barrel piano on my phone if you can I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not but we'll, we'll, we'll give it a go um, let's have a look Here, 
it is as it arrived. Right. Can you see that? That is the barrel piano. Which way do you want me to tilt it that way? There it is. It's sat, it sat inside the trailer there. Sat inside my box trailer. But that is the barrel piano that I bought the other week. Apparently there are less than a hundred of those still in the country. And if you get on Andy's shed, onto the blog on Andy's shed, and then you'll uh, you will see that restoration has already begun on that. And uh, hopefully we'll have more to tell you about that next week. So, that about wraps it up for this week. We'll, like I say, next week we'll be telling you more about the barrel piano. We'll, uh, we'll hopefully have a little bit of video shot of it and that by then. So you'll be able to have a little, a little look at it. And uh, remember, keep your suggestions coming for things that you want to see us do. You can either leave a message in the comment section for this video if you are watching us on YouTube. Or you can send me a message through our very own website by going here, andyshed.callpress.net. That's just andyshed.callpress.net. And you can get on the contact us page on there and you can send me a private message on there about what you want to see on the show or about anything else that you want to get in touch with me about it is all on there and if you are wanting to be a patron and if you're wanting to uh, kind of sponsor us um, per month then the address that you need is that one patreon.com forward slash andy's shed Okay, that's patreon.com forward slash Andy Shed. And that is the one that you need for that. So, there we go. Right, we've been on, crikey, we've been on for like ages today. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm joking now. Blimey, what's happening there? <laughs> yeah, we've been on, how long have we been on? Well, it says here that we've been live for 55, 55 minutes. Actually, we haven't, because what that what that means is it's 55 minutes since the pre-show um, card came up. Because if you tuned in at about 10 to uh, 10 to 7 or something like that this evening, you will have seen this card. And it's 55 minutes since that card went up, because that is when the live stream officially starts. But if you're watching us after the fact, We'll have edited that blank bit off the beginning of the show. So you'll not see that. That's only what the live people see. Right. So that's your lot for today. Um, a big thank you to all the people who are out there at Tissington today. Another thing we're going to have for you, um, hopefully next week, is how to make a flower on a wood lathe believe it or believe it not yeah how to make a flower on a lathe next week we will show you how just before we go i just need to uh, tell you that if you are going to be in sheffield at all next weekend then uh, we are out and about there with the sheffield collectors club so if you want to come down and see us live and see some of the collection of telephones that i've got here then uh, you are very welcome to come and uh, come and see us next weekend we will be at Healy City Farm on Saturday and then at Callum Island Industrial Museum on Sunday of next weekend on Saturday we will be at Healy City Farm from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. that's on Saturday Healy City Farm 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and on Sunday at Callum Island slightly shorter hours 11 a.m. to I think it's either 3 or 4 p.m. at Kellam Island um, but the key is we start an hour later at Kellam Island so it'll probably be 4 p.m. I think because there's another special event going off down there on the same day as well um, called on the water side whatever that is so that should be fun shouldn't it um, so come down and see us at either of those if you want to if you want to come and see us at Healy City Farm it is free to come and see us there it is free admission if you want to come and see us at Kellam Island 
Um, it's free to see us, but there is an admission if you want to get into the museum, I believe. Right, that about wraps it up for today. Remember, get on to andyshed.copress.net for more of the same, more stuff about telephones or all kinds of other things that we've restored in the shed. And uh, also, you can contact us there by getting on the contact us page and just typing in your message and that will come straight to me. Or if you want to do it a slightly easier way, if you're watching this back on YouTube, then uh, just type something into the comments section on YouTube and you'll find us in there as well. Easy peasy, isn't it? We will be back same time, same place next week. All being well, 7 o'clock next Sunday. That's 7 o'clock next Sunday evening right here. When hopefully we'll be showing you how to make a flower on a wood turning lathe. And we'll have more about the uh, barrel piano as well. Plus maybe a few other bits and pieces. And of course, maybe something that you've asked to see. So until next week, have a great week ahead. Keep tinkering in those sheds out there, people. And we'll see you soon. Bye for now. And remember... That uh, if you've liked what you've seen, give us a like and give us a subscribe here on YouTube and hit that bell icon on the subscribe button to make sure that you get notified when there are more things coming up.